Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is July 13th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I am going to talk with you a bit about, actually I'm gonna give you a, an update on the present situation in the Arctic, both Arctic sea ice and the present Arctic climate state. And to start off, I'd like to talk a bit about how global warming, human-caused global warming, affects the Earth's atmosphere and um, areas and times when you would expect to see more impact from increasing greenhouse gases in the Earth's atmosphere and times where that influence tends to moderate a bit. And, and we see this in the 80 degree uh, north to 90 degree north zone in the uh, lat latitudinal range. So near the North Pole from 80 degrees north to 90 degrees north latitude. And, and the way we see this is <clears throat> during winter and uh, during polar night. So it's, it's a period of time where it's completely dark up there you see more relative warming versus baseline temperatures. So in this, in this graph, baseline temperatures are in green, so these are average temperatures. And then the red line is 2018 recorded temperatures thus far. And, and what we see during winter time is that the greenhouse gas effect has a far greater impact on the Arctic during winter than it does during summer. And the reason for this is that greenhouse gases trap long wave radiation. And, um, and this efficiency is, is enhanced, is amplified at night. And so, or, or during periods of darkness, or during periods when the angle of the sun is low. Now, during summertime, when the angle of the sun is high, there's um, there's less direct impact from greenhouse gases, uh, particularly in the Arctic, and so so you see a moderation. Now there's other effects going on here in the Arctic, and um, but the main effect is are these greenhouse gas emissions, which help to keep Arctic temperatures very warm in the winter time, and and though in some regions of the Arctic they're warmer than normal in summertime. Um, you tend to see this moderation. So, so presently, the Arctic as a whole is experiencing about average temperatures for this time of year, maybe a little bit above average. The anomaly range is between 0 0.4 degrees Celsius below normal for the entire Arctic and 0 0.7 degrees Celsius above normal. So a uh, pretty close range for the Arctic. I'm going to flip over here to the anomaly map and show you uh, what some of the predictions are for the next 10 days. And, and what we see typically during the summer period as it relates to human-caused climate change is that the central Arctic tends to cool a bit relative to wintertime temperatures, which are well above average, and the central Arctic tends to moderate back toward average. And um, these edge zones here near the continental regions tend to see very severe spikes in warming. And, and, and in the coming 10 days, we're, we're looking at some rather severe predicted warming spikes for Scandinavia. And later into the forecast, some strong warming spikes through the Greenland area and in the region of the Canadian archipelago and Alberta. And you can see this starting to show up here with 10 to 20 degrees Celsius above average temperatures, 10 to 15 degrees Celsius above average temperatures in parts of Scandinavia, and five to, in some cases, 20 degrees Celsius or, or more above average temperatures for the Canadian archipelago. Now, trough zone is, is bowing out here in Siberia. And, and that will tend to bring stormy conditions and uh, more rainfall for this region, which, which is probably a good thing because there are a lot of Siberian wildfires presently burning 
in that location. So going on to sea ice, we are presently at 10th lowest sea ice on record for the date at around 8.98 million square kilometers for July 12th, which is the most recent update for NSIDC. And according to NSIDC, that's about, looks like about 1.7 million square kilometers below the 1979 to 1990 average. So we've we are still in the range where we are considerably seeing considerably lower sea ice than than was typical even just a, a few decades ago. And it's about half a million square kilometers below, I'm sorry, a, a little bit more than actually that. That's about 700,000 square kilometers above the, the record low for the date. So, so much closer to the record low. Now, if, um, if, you, if you look at the trend line for this year, we are currently tracking toward around 4.7, 4.8 million square kilometers of sea ice by the end of melt season, which is, of course, much lower than than in previous decades, but is not near the uh, the, the record low line. This is not a prediction; it's just an extrapolation of trends. Uh, this time of year, we can see a lot of variability in the Arctic sea ice, so. So we could see sea ice track above or below this, this projected range. Um, looking at the ice itself uh, from the satellite picture, I'm gonna zoom out here. We see a lot of uh, regions that are experiencing thin ice. There's also a lot of clouds in the Arctic. And I'd just like to note that we've had a consistent low pressure system in the central Arctic. And the counterclockwise circulation of low pressure systems in the central Arctic tend to have a larger synoptic, a larger effect on the sea ice itself. It tends to spread it out. So, so, so this feature is, is preventing greater extent losses by, by pr reducing compaction, which, which causes, especially during summertime, large rates of loss but also by, by spreading out the extent and increasing the albedo, the re reflectivity of the sea ice. Now, areas where we see thinning, and again, this is a, is a heavily clouded picture. We see thinning in the Laptev Sea, a great amount of thinning and much warmer than normal sea surface temperatures in the Laptev Sea. We've also seen recent very rapid melt in the East Siberian Sea. The Chukchi Sea has remained much warmer than normal, and, and recently there's been a, a lot of ice melt and ice thinning surrounding the Chukchi Sea. Beaufort is very thin and fragmented, and uh, there's recent be, recently been a, a lot of melt in the edge zone near where some of the rivers dump out, and you're getting this much warmer than normal water flow into the Arctic in that zone. Hudson Bay has been cooler than normal, so we've, we've had a lag in sea ice loss there, but it's it's speeding up as it would tend to seasonally. And same with Baffin Bay. Baffin Bay is uh, experiencing a uh, rapid melt as we would expect seasonally. Now, I want to just talk a little bit here about Savalbard. Savalbard, the region around Savalbard, this large island east of Greenland, large archipelago east of Greenland, has seen much reduced sea ice coverage in its region and and average record lows. Zach, Zach Lay reported a lot recently about this. So overall, the Arctic is uh, looking not quite as bad as it could be considering the conditions on the ground. Uh, Arctic temperatures are about average at this time, even though in the edge zones we are seeing much warmer than average temperatures, and then the recent spate of much warmer than average temperatures has let off a lot of Siberian fires, as you can see in the upper edge. So thank you for joining me, and I'll talk with you soon.